welcome everybody once again to one more <clears throat> uh, interview with our mm -hmm. uh, good friends of our mastermind group here in Perth, Australia. Uh, today we are starting a little bit late for technical issues, but I think we are just basically catching up. Today we have our, our uh, good friend, um, inventor, Mr. Peter Edmonds. He's a naval architect from Perth, Australia. He's got over 40 years of experience designing and building uh, chips of all kinds. And it has been lately when he, the hemp has caught his uh, interest. And since then, it has been an extraordinary journey to be around Mr. Peter uh, and, and all the projects that you are basically uh, putting into action. Welcome, Peter. Peter, welcome. It's, gay. it's a great pleasure once again talking to you and your uh, wonderful ideas and your wonderful actions that you're taking on behalf of, um, of the Mastermind Group. Start off with, first for the product. Here. Is, uh, it is a view on paper of the first prototype boat, a 5.2 meter, three seater Canadian style canoe. Now we will continue and uh, uh, walk Peter. across. Peter. Hello. Peter. Hello. Peter? Yes. <clears throat> but before right. we go on, uh, now, could, you, could you please show the audience the the small prototype that you built um, yes. some time ago. There's David with a half scale model starting point that illustrates part of what we're doing. There we are, that's back to where we were. Uh, are some views of uh, that half scale model we just looked at. Go back to old technology of uh, of paper, printed paper. And how this all happens is I lay up a whole bunch of panels like this. Uh, now, here are the end, uh, the end panels, five of them across the boat. Then there's the middle panels. Then the end panels are repeated there to make the other end. So, the idea is that I make lots of panels flat and then tie them together, turning uh, and get the, uh, right, here we are, we're back in. Back to this one again. That, that is what happens when those panels are tied together and then stuck together with resin and fiber. So. Peter. Um, so tell us how long did it take you to, to come to the dry mix? Oh, just as well I'm not keeping score. It's taken a long time. <laughs> First of all, just th there's been a lot of learning of process here. The flat pack concept has been around for some time. It is primarily used in plywood and then stitched and glued together. This is all very well, but it doesn't allow us to take the benefits of, of a hemp fiber laminate. So, so how many how many trials do you do before you actually arrive to the dry mix? Uh, oh, plenty, but there are various, various small stages. Mainly, well, two things there, a number of things I've had to address. Uh, one is the actual laminate material on which I'll talk later. Uh, another one um, is how to do what is essentially a plywood process into uh, a hemp fiber laminate process. Um, and the, uh, another one which has been looming large is be, been how to, uh, how to build the actual components which I've found a number of ways of not doing it. Um, <laughs> I'll give a... Um, but I'm also, I'm, I'm Peter, but yeah. I'm also aware that you did, if I recall very well, you got over 
nine different uh, widths and and trials that you actually show us during the last year. Right. <laughs> okay. This uh, a, bit, a, bit of, a bit of show and tell. This panel uh, is basically what we're replacing. That is conventional uh, polyester resin uh, with top strand mat and fiberglass. That that is one. Uh, that that is how people have been doing it for, for ages. Um, here I've got a similar panel, but this one is um, a hemp fiber, a fabric type clothing fabric type fiber, um, in uh, epoxy resin, which is surfboard resin. So this, this works, and basically this is what I've been using for my various prototypes, models, and so on at, at this stage. And there's more in material yet. Uh, this is um, a, a, a It did work sort of, it made a panel, but it's far too thick and, and thick and heavy and too much resin and not enough. I have along the way developed a uh, some fiberglass molds. These have not been cleaned up properly um, because they didn't work out very well, but these are, these are to do a test. Now, what I'm going to do, see, I've got a main, a main flat surface there, which represents the outside of, uh, of the canoe panel. Uh, uh, it is difficult to see, but I've actually got steps here, uh, which forms the edge. It doesn't show very well. Now, uh, yeah, I don't... here, first one, brush some resin in there. Then I get some fabric. And put it down there. See, this is the fabric. You can't touch it over uh, over the uh, zoom. That goes in there in the resin. Sticks down there in the resin. Then I follow up by putting first of all a layer of core mat. Um, reinforcing this is an industry thing i've just cut a couple of narrow strips of it here this is about two millimeters thick that then that then sticks sticks down into the resin there and it's all sticky then to make it thick at the edges i'm going to put um, multiple strips of the core mat to here and the one, I'll get a pointer thing, which might make things show a little better. Um, right now, this is trick a little bit tricky looking at the picture on the screen. Now, here, the point of at the point of the ballpoint is the edge of the mold and the edge of, of the molding. And what I'm doing is these these are making thicker edges. Then, uh, uh, once I've got enough of all of those things there, I put this out and let it dry and set. Then out, out from the mold comes something to the mold shape for each of them. Turn this right way up. Uh, and um, this is, this is a sample piece of the panel that is molded. What is important is it is moderately soft and it can be twisted and it can bend. It, this is needed because we are starting off with flat panels like this and ending up with a boat shape. So this needs to be reasonably soft. Peter, I, hello. I cannot, we cannot see your face. Oh, that's okay. Well, uh, Hello, I'm back again. 
Yeah. yeah. Now, uh, Peter, I wanted to highlight uh, the fact that um, part of the technology that you are developing in plastic hemp, we have proposed already a company to use the same plastic, a different mix, of course, uh, to manufacture credit cards or magnetic cards. Is it something that is in the air? Um, it's something that Mr. Peter and I are, have been pushing um, for some time, um, but uh, this is the first time we actually uh, discuss it openly and publicly. Oh, <laughs> we have been discussing this. There is one major issue here. I'm look, uh, looking at fairly large items, typically molding panels up to 2.4 meters for a panel, then they join together to make, in this case, five, a 5.2 meter canoe, and they're twisted and shaped, uh, and I may, may be looking at 20, 25 kilos. The credit card thing has got to go in the thousands or yes. millions, millions. To, uh, to be worthwhile, is small, uh, and uh, the resin I'm using is basically lay it, lay it up over uh, perhaps an hour while it's still soft and runny, then leave it to set overnight, uh, and then it gradually, it, it develops its strength. Um, it basically needs some time for the chemical reactions to happen to get, get the strength. And in this temperature, this, is, this has taken me um, through at least one full day of, of winter daytime temperature. Back to the back to the boat now, Ramon. Yes. Uh, but there are all sorts of things that um, can lead off here. I am probably by now the leading person in Australia on hemp fiber laminates. Um, I'm not talking to anyone much because I don't think anyone's much is doing anything else. But I'm having to learn and become um, and gather expertise. Uh, this came from surfboards, which are already established. Surfboards are quite a conventional commodity. Basically, they are a, a lump of foam plastic uh, with something hard on the outside. People traditionally have been building surfboards. I say traditionally, something's been happening for um, 20, 30 years or so. But it's, so that's traditional in this industry. A um, little bit longer than that, I guess. Like yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But, but, um, <laughs> it's, for a long time, the fiberglass over foam has substituted from from the wooden box ply, plywood over framing, which you which you'll still see hang up in um, uh, in, in places where surfies hang out in in bars and restaurants and so on. Um, Anyway, so that has worked well. They put a thin skin of the hemp fiber in a uh, bio epoxy resin over the foam. That works. And, and it, it, it is affordable. Um, it rides the waves well. And, and the, the people who are doing it love it. Someone said, why don't, you, why don't we build a boat out of it? Or try building boats out of it. And I said, OK. So this is why I'm here. So I'm, we I'm go here. to. Peter, just to, you know, while managing the time of the interview, um, we have also developed the idea of using your technology for a structural beams in, in a dump project that we are... Uh, right. yes? okay, I'll, okay, I'll wrap, uh, wrap up here and move on and wave a few more things. Right, we have this panel. This surface, outer surface of the panel is off the mold and it, under my fingertips, it is smooth and it is ready to paint. Um, I then get multiple panels. Mm. Ah, here it is, and join them together. You know how I was talking about cable ties and filler and so on. Um, this is one panel here and another panel here with an angled joint here. No, it doesn't show very well. I'm not really very good at, at doing these, but anyway, 
this works and it's all nice and smooth inside and extremely strong and solid. And this is actual laminates we're going to use. I need something also, Peter, something that we want to use for our electrical vehicle car that we want, yeah. we want to build the body of plastic hem as well. Yeah. Anyway, so that is, that is basically the end of that particular fabrication. I now have various issues, uh, which I won't enlarge on at present, uh, on uh, materials. Using a fiber like this, this is a, a, a weed matting type fiber. Uh, this is what gives the, the big brown one I showed earlier. That is just the fiber cut off the roll. That doesn't work. A, a solution, which I think may well work. Um, some people are making hemp, using hemp and other fibers to make paper. What I'm waving in front of me is an A3 sheet. You just have to believe me on that. And it, does, it bends, it folds and does things there. Also, this is where a little bit of white fella magic comes in. Uh, a couple of days ago, I took three sheets of that paper, which um, this is fairly thin as they go. It can be a lot thicker to uh, basically a thin cardboard. That one, we're looking at was three layers of 200 grams per square meter paper. I put them onto a mold, uh, resin, paper, resin, paper, resin, paper, resin, and rolling out the time. So that was three, three thicknesses of paper, of that thin stuff. And here is an A3 sheet of laminate. Quite flexible, quite strong. Um, a lot of development still to happen, but the great thing here is you can get fiber into paper form without having to um, spin it and weave it and then make it into a fabric like this. This is, this, this is the sort of thing that you can make clothes out. This costs $80 a square meter, sorry, $80 a kilogram buying it off the roll. So it, it how is many, an expense. Peter, how, how many square meters is one kilo? Uh, oh, this is about 270 grams, uh, 270 grams per square meter, which means four, roughly four square meters to a kilo. Um, so um, it might be somewhere between, um, perhaps right, think of about $200 worth of uh, fabric to do, to do the canoe. Uh, a canoe like that can afford that. Um, other applications can't afford that. So uh, this, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm Peter, still trying to find Peter, all sorts of solutions along Peter, the way. I am very sure with uh, that uh, uh, knowledge, um, uh, our search for investments and funds will um, be reinforced because well, a mind like yours in this moment of history yeah. to be supported to... Well, the thing here is that um, I've still got to develop, before I offer something for people to, to put money in, make, make stuff, make stuff out of it, there's still quite a way to go. But, um, first of all, I've got to address the material which I've been talking about. And then I've got to address the, um, the product, um, which I've been talking about earlier. Uh, and this is not just canoes. It's just I chose, um, I just chose the, the 5.2 meter canoe, which I've developed the design for, because this lends itself to the, the flat pack technique, which, is a long story and I won't go into it today. So there's a, uh, then, quite a, but quite Peter, a long way to go before something is there. But, but Peter, um, uh, with all due respect, um, in our mastermind group, we tend to open very uh, wide openly. I quite disagree with you on regards to the, <clears throat> uh, to the progress, not the progress that you have achieved, is the 
the progress that can be taken to uh, operational scale because the product is basically ready. What we need is the equipment, some money to pay other engineers to get this up and running, the, you know, to the scale that we want to. Uh, but what we are looking at here uh, is we are still um, significantly short. And this, having got to this, this is a fiberglass mold as a means of production. Um, this is something I wasn't, uh, I didn't have this months ago. I, I've had all sorts of ways of doing things well, because they are too labor intensive. They yeah. were thought of, but a long time. I've that's, had, where, that's where I've I been, insist, uh, Peter. That's yeah. where I insist. Now, now if, you I had look, more, if you had if we, you had more help, uh, uh, catches, oh, we could, catches, we could I'm, more, catches, I'm still at the, uh, at the, um, the expert bottleneck situation. My back, part of my background is that I've had over 40 years in WA um, in and around the um, fiberglass boat building industry. So I do know a, a fair bit about laminates and design of laminates and uh, setting up manufacturers because part of the deal here is that naval architects who basically own ships and boats not only design the product, um, but they also support the manufacturing facilities. Yes. Um, so, um, so basically a lot of um, what is in shipyards and boatyards is um, run using naval architects and their technology. So well, that, uh, Peter. That, that, is, that is part of it. Now, my brother, a lot of idea has come from these a lot of ideas, projects, and actions are triggered in this yeah. group. Right and now, we have what I what I think that we should that? start. We should start getting in touch with our chip jars down south yeah. in Perth. There are plenty yeah. of them, and perhaps it's the time to invite them to consider the plastic hemp as an alternative to build yachts and boats and else. Right now, I'm just about to. I'm just shifting folders here. Try the blue folder. Right, the blue folder. Um, I've been looking at geodesic domes. I'll just turn over here. Um, here is the geometry uh, of a geodesic dome. Uh, all the lines there in different colors are edges and all the panel triangular panels are fill in panels. Yeah. And so what? And here we have um, one day I'm going to have a good production assistant sitting next to me handing me things. Right now, <laughs> right now we, uh, one thing we have achieved today is the need for having um, Ramon as the producer, whatever, and me as a presenter sitting in different rooms so we don't, our sound doesn't work. <laughs> that is a good lesson for today. Thank you. Now, what we've done, this is an idea that Ramon came up with. What about geodesic domes? And it's got to this stage. Here is a dome um, four meters spherical radius. And on one side, um, there is a door structure. Here is, an, uh, here is another view, um, or more, more, more views. Um, no, guess what? We're upside down. <laughs> Anyway, there's the door and there are holes there for uh, the windows. These are just the first bits of paper that, 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 uh, that came up. Yeah, this but is, I, if I may. This is the dome we may, started. Peter, Peter. This is, 
This is a small dome that we started with. My brother, if I may, if I can explain the audience where we are right now in that regards. Okay, uh, go on. Hemp Engineering has just come to an agreement with a structural engineer uh, from the state of California in the United States. Um, he will be taking this design and calculate calculate it with a uh, plastic hem materials so we can actually understand and capture all the data that we would require to uh, approve this design uh, structurally speaking so um, uh, that was the today surprise for you peter <laughs> i didn't have okay. time to <laughs> to tell you that earlier okay it needs, needs more needs more wriggle on from me now what i'm i have here uh, is a possible way of doing this using him. Uh, right, another sheet of paper, triangles. You know, I said uh, geodesic domes are basically made out of triangles. Uh, the idea here, uh, this is the one we're going to look at. Right, see the dark frame around the outside is a perimeter frame. And you, uh, and you join that edge on this triangle to a corresponding edge on another triangle, which goes roughly there. I'm getting a bit better at this point and show. So there's a structural- Interlocking uh, system. Stick there, and then there's filler in the middle, which keeps the weather out. And then, the, the, then um, inside the triangle, which, which is, what, however deep you want to make it, it might be 70, 100 millimeters. We're then looking at putting um, um, putting hempcrete, a, fabric, a, a known fabrication material, which will provide stiffness, insulation, and things like that. And a, a, a truckload of domes, a truckload of triangles will make a dome. Believe me. Yes. Peter, also, paper. Peter, yeah. if I may, that, that we only have three minutes to go. Okay. I also want to introduce that uh, we are working with our biomass engineering uh, company sister. Uh, there is our um, access to build uh, homes with these type of boards that this company uh, builds in China. But eventually what we are after is to, to do this in Australia for cabinets, for um, to use it for all type of boards, especially construction. And Peter, I got no words to be grateful of your time, your dedication. I have told you privately, and I tell you now today, once again, that if I ever get old, I want to have that uh, brilliant mind of yours and that energy to keep achieving things. What the audience wants to, what I want the audience to know that our good Mr. Uh, friend Peter Edmonds is just about 82 years old and he is still kicking asses. <laughs> um, I'm, now, um, I'm now up to 83, what is it? Uh, I'm now up to 82. Well, my friend, thank you once again. Um, I, 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 you know, I'm very grateful. Unfortunately, we started today late and we don't have time today for questions, but in the next session, I invite you to come over. Uh, we will have a special guest that is not confirmed yet, but I know he will come and we will have plenty of time for, uh, for catching up with the questions of this time and the next one. Thank you very much to everyone. Thank you.